Hi everybody, welcome to Sophisti Cakes by Mary. I'm Mary. If you're new here, welcome. If you're not new here, welcome back. Um, one of the most commonly asked questions I get is about my buttercream. And I know I'm normally not in front of the camera because, you know, makeup, hair, don't have time for all that, don't want to do all that anymore. Um, so, but for this explanation, I thought it'd be better if I went ahead and showed you how I do some of my buttercreams and give you some ideas. Um, I have three buttercreams that I use standardly, which is actually two buttercreams in one fondant. And I guess a cream cheese buttercream also. But I also included some variations on my standard classic American buttercream that I use on most things um, to give you some different flavor profile ideas. Um, the fondant recipe, I am hesitating on sharing that because it's not actually my recipe. It's a recipe that I got from Liz Merrick, the, um, Liz, the LMF, Liz Merrick fondant recipe. And um, I don't want to give the false impression that it's my recipe because it's not. <laughs> it's not mine, but it's very, very good. Um, if you guys need a tutorial on that at some point, let me know and I can show you step by step how it's done. But you could also go to Liz Merrick's page or her channel and go to the source if you want to see how she did it. That's how I learned it. So I have my classic American buttercream that I use that you can add so many different things to. And then I also have a Swiss meringue buttercream. And the Swiss meringue is actually a cheater Swiss meringue. I can do the standard Swiss meringue recipe, but for time conveniences and it works just as well in my opinion. This one actually starts with uh, pasteurized egg whites instead of having to boil, you know, simmer, cook the egg whites yourself because once they're pasteurized, they're safe. So you kind of skip that step. And I also included, I get this question a lot also, a whipped cream frosting. This one is a stabilized whipped cream. I don't typically use whipped cream because I do a lot of cake designs that require stability and whipped cream as we know is very very climate affected and that makes it hard for weddings and birthdays when there's structure and they need to hold their integrity they're fine for cupcakes if you're going to be eating them that day um, or a cake if you're going to be eating it that day and you don't need it to support fondant or do any structural things with that buttercream. So that's, I included that as well. But this one has a little trick in how I stabilized it. So if these sounds like things that might be interesting to you, please stand by and we'll get to it. So I think a good place to start would be with my stabilized whipped cream. For this recipe, you'll need one pint of heavy cream, one cup of sifted powdered sugar, one teaspoon salt, and two tablespoons of marshmallow fluff. The marshmallow fluff is what's going to stabilize your buttercream. Before I do this recipe, I always put my mixing bowl into the freezer for a good 15 to 20 minutes so that it is chilled and it helps that helps you whip up your heavy cream. And use your whisk attachment to do this. Start by adding your heavy cream. and whip it up a little bit. And once you've got that started, start adding your powdered sugar. I started adding one half of a cup at a time. And then add your vanilla. Make sure that you're scraping your bowl. With all these recipes, make sure that you're scraping your bowl so that you get everything incorporated. Now just let this mix real good. And once it starts to thicken up, that's the time to add your marshmallow fluff. I would say it took about 10 minutes, eight to 10 minutes to get this to the consistency that I wanted. And when it gets stiff peaks, you're ready to go. 
Now this buttercream is wonderful for piping on cupcakes. Um, I don't use it a lot for my stacked and tiered fancy cakes because it does not have the stability, but it's great for cupcakes. And then for recipe number two. I call this my Cheater Swiss Meringue buttercream because I start with pasteurized egg whites that are in a carton. You can do this with just your regular whole eggs and separate the egg whites from your yolks, bring it to room temperature, do all that if you want to, that's fine. But I find this works great for me. And just make sure that all your ingredients are room temperature. With all my recipes, besides the whipped, make sure everything's at room temperature. Now you start with putting your egg whites in the beater. I'm sorry, egg whites in your mixing bowl and add your powdered sugar to it. Start with your whisk attachment on low for about 30 seconds to get it all incorporated and then crank it up. After you've scra scraped the sides of the bowl down, crank it up to medium, me medium high. Almost, you could even bring it to high and just keep mixing because you're gonna need this to get to stiff peaks also before you add your butter. And do not forget to scrape. Now I'm checking to see if the peaks are stiff enough. And they were. So I'm gonna switch to my paddle attachment and start putting in my room temperature, unsalted butter, one little dollop at a time. Maybe about two tablespoons worth at a time. This takes a little while, but trust me, it's well worth it in the end. once you've got it all in there, just crank it up and let it mix. Just let it mix away. It might even come to a part where it seems to be separating on you, but that's okay. Just let it keep going because it will come together. You'll even see when it's starting right now. See, it's starting to kind of come together and that's where I added my salt. And then you can add your flavoring of choice. And this Swiss meringue is beautiful. It's way more stable than the whipped, but it does not crust like an American. And it starts off very yellow, but as you mix it, it becomes whiter and whiter. And it pipes beautifully also. Now, this recipe is gonna have the same base for all of these different flavors. This is my traditional crusting American buttercream that I always use. I'm gonna do a quarter of a recipe compared to what I normally do. This one is not gonna beat the air bubbles out, but you can do that with your, your um, spatula, kind of get all those bubbles out if you want. For piping on cupcakes, I don't worry about it because squeezing it through that tip tends to get rid of the bubbles. So we're gonna start by adding four sticks of unsalted butter into the bowl. I like to get this really mixed up well before I add anything else to it. I just let it go for a good 10 minutes. And that softens your butter and it lightens the color. Now I'm gonna add my salt. And I'm gonna take a second to scrape it down because butter likes to stick to the sides and the bottom of the bowl. So you'll wanna get that scraped off so that you're getting everything incorporated. I'm adding my clear vanilla. And scrapey, scrapey, again, <laughs> a lot of scraping. And just kinda let it go. Now we're gonna start adding our powdered sugar, another half a cup to a cup at a time. You 
give it a little time in between scoops of powdered sugar to incorporate a little bit, otherwise you're gonna have a powdered sugar cloud. Now I'm gonna mix it for another about eight minutes to try to lighten up the color a little bit. Some of these is not gonna matter because the additions we're making into some of these flavors are gonna add their own color. But for the, just the white one, with the classic, I'm just gonna make sure that it turns white. And there I just added three tablespoons of heavy cream just to um, thin it out a little bit. So there's the classic crusting American buttercream. From there, we will do all of our variations. The first one is, this is either Nutella or chocolate. It's hard for me to tell because they look the same at this stage and I lost footage of one or the other. Don't know where it went. So either way, if it's the chocolate chips, you're gonna melt them in the microwave and then add them to the buttercream. If you're using the Nutella, then you just add it in straight from the jar. And this is to taste, really. Add as much as you want. You can add more, you can add less. It, it's completely up to you. Now for this next version, I'm going to just add some caramel syrup that you get in the ice cream section right to the buttercream. I'm telling you guys, these recipes, these variations are so easy. Just put it right in, mix it in. That's it. Put in as much as you want. If it's a little thinned out, add a little powdered sugar. And now we're gonna do a brown sugar buttercream. I love this one. The trick to this and the next two is that you add some of the brown sugar or whatever I'm gonna add in the next ones to some buttercream, put it in the microwave for about 30 seconds, melt it, and then add it to your buttercream and that gets rid of some of the graininess. This flavor is really good with the chocolate chip cookie dough cake. And I did go ahead and add a little bit more powdered sugar to thicken it up just a little bit. So the thing with buttercreams, they're gonna be sweet. They're supposed to be. If it's not a whipped, they're gonna be sugary sweet. So don't be afraid to add some if you need to thicken it up. And now this one's really cool. This one's really cool. Just using Kool-Aid, fruit punch Kool-Aid. You could use any of the flavors if you wanted to. Just take it straight from the packet, put it on some of the buttercream, put it in the microwave till it's melted like that, mix it together, and then add it to some more buttercream. This taste is so good. It's definitely more of a kid's cake flavor. Um, my kids love it. They absolutely love it. It's very sweet, but it tastes just like Kool-Aid. And again, I added a little bit more of the powdered sugar to thicken up so it's more pipeable. Look at the color, it's so pretty. I didn't have to add anything. And then for strawberry buttercream, this is how I tend to do it. I take the freeze dried strawberries, pulse them in, this is my Ninja, I think it's called. You could do a food processor till you get a powder. Then you put it through a sieve to get rid of the clumps. And then put it in with your buttercream, melt it just like the other two, and put it in with some more plain vanilla buttercream. And I do believe I thickened this one up again too, because once you melt it, it's gonna it's gonna have a different yeah. I did add some more. When you melt it, it's gonna thin it down. It's just the nature, the physics of melting things. <laughs> it's gonna make it thinner. So you're gonna have to add some more powdered sugar, but oh, it's so good. Because when you're using fresh strawberries, sometimes it can make it really soupy and hard to work with. And then I show you how I pipe them all out. And there you go, guys. All these different variations based off of three different types of buttercream. I hope you enjoyed this and learned something and can use some of this information. And if you did like it, Please subscribe, like, share, comment, do all the things, and we'll catch you on the next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.